feel like sometimes we're giving some bad advice. Yes, we give <laughs> terrible advice. This is called Ask Firebase, not Listen to Firebase. So don't actually listen to anything we have to say here and um, you'll probably be okay. That's an important distinction. Yes, our lawyers have asked us to, to tell you this. Scene one, take one, Mark. Hey, all you Firebase developers. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, your host, and today my co-host is Todd Kerpelman. Hi, everybody. I'm wearing the same shirt as last time. I should remember to change shirts. Yes. I only have one shirt that I wear, actually. That's, that's it. All right, well, on a lighter note, are you ready to answer some questions? I am super ready to answer questions. Let's do it. All right, let's dive in. Our first question comes from Jirion who says, hi there. Say I have a collection called item purchase history. And for every document, I wanna save the user that bought the item. Hmm. Is it best practice to save the user ID as a string or direct document reference to the user? So uh, the answer is kind of either one, um, which is not a good answer. So let me go into a, a little more detail. Um, and so basically what you're wondering is, should I save just my user ID as a string or should I save a sort of reference to the user ID document as a reference? Um, so kind of the advantage of um, using references is that they're a little more type safe, which is kind of weird when we're talking about a schemaless database. But like with references, um, you know, you can add in some security rules that say like this thing has to be a reference or you can make sure the client SDKs know that you're storing a reference and it'll make sure that like it's sort of saving everything correctly for you. And when you get it back from the database, you can sort of automatically parse it as a reference. So there's sort of some nice advantages to using a document reference. That being said, I would sort of stop and think about what your underlying data is actually supposed to be. And in your case, you're really kind of saving the user ID and not the user ID document. And so I actually might lean towards just using the user ID string because there might be times when you actually want to get the user ID string and then having to like extract it from this reference where you have to sort of you know break apart the path and figure out where the user ID exists among that um, might be a little weird. So I could go either way. What I would say is kind of think about sort of what the underlying data really is that you're trying to represent and, and go with that. Yeah, that's a really good point because uh, so as you're sort of describing, sometimes uh, you might not just want to access their profile. There, you might have some kind of posts where you want to get some, you know, sub collection that is the user ID or something like that. So just having the user ID allows you to more easily access the different parts of the database. That's true. Yeah, if you need to use that ID to get to other parts, then it's a lot easier than having to break it apart. Bingo. Ready for another? I am. All right. Bring it on. Woo. Next one comes from Yuan Wei, who says, is there a way to prevent Firestore from writing to local cache when a device is offline? Huh, okay, so I have a question for you, Yuan Wei, which is, why do you want to do this? Because we've been sort of talking about it and we're trying to figure out like what your use case is and um, what you would want the SDK to do instead. Like, do you want it to kind of do nothing and not try and write locally? Do you want it to sort of fail and why? So it's a little hard to answer without kind of knowing what you're trying to do. That said, um, there, there are probably some hacky ways of doing it. So I think, you know, if you want to sort of avoid saving or sort of seeing your rights reflected locally when your device is offline, um, probably the best way is kind of when you write to the database, that actually gets um, reflected in your listener twice. The first time when it happens locally, the second time when the write has been confirmed by the server. And Firebase will actually tend to ignore that second um, trigger because it says, eh, you know, I've kind of shown the user this data anyway. But what you can do is you can tell Firebase, hey, I really do care about seeing both of these instances when my write happens. And then what you can do is you can kind of ignore that first one um, and only listen to the writes when sort of the set pending writes value is equal to false, which means, yes, this really has been confirmed by the database. Another way you could kind of do this is put your writes into a transaction because transactions will actually fail if your device is offline. Um, and so if you're really if you're really adamant about not being able to write any data if your user is offline, maybe put in a transaction. That, that's another workaround. Um, but again, why? Why do you want to do this? Tell me, tell me internet or, you know, follow up with me on Twitter. Nice. All right, great question. Yeah, this one is for, from, I love this name, the Fluffy T-Rex. I did look up just to make sure that that, that is what it says. Yeah, you know, we, we don't know for a fact that T-Rexes weren't fluffy. So this could be 
historically accurate. Yeah, or that they roar. You never know. They could like mm -hmm. uh, meow. They could just bark. Like we don't know what sound they, they make. They could just sound like strange birds, right? Because didn't they? Dinosaurs eventually became it's birds, true. right? So maybe they just sound like birds with like really deep voices. I like to imagine they sound like Wookies. I mm -hmm. feel like that would be a good sound for like a T Rex, you know? So the fluffy T Rex wants to know for Android, how do I keep track of the number of docs in a Firestore collection? All right, so you want to know how many documents are in this collection? Um, so there's no simple like document dot count, um, you know, capability if you were hoping for that. So short answer is if you're hoping for an easy solution, there really isn't one. Um, but there are a few ideas that, that um, people have come up with. First, read in all the docs and then count them. Um, keep in mind though, that could get expensive if you have a lot of documents because every read, you know, you, you get charged for. Another option is kind of uh, use a counter, like either through a cloud function or by having the client do it. So, you know, anytime you want to create a new document in your collection, there's a cloud function that says, oh, looks like a document was just created. I'm going to go ahead and increment this counter in this other document somewhere. Um, or, you know, you can have the client be like, hey, I'm adding a new document. Let's also kind of, you know, increment this counter through a transaction. Um, that's a pretty good way of doing it. Although keep in mind that if this is like a super active collection, um, and you think these these writes are going to happen more than once a second, you are going to run into some some issues, and then you're going to have to go with a distributed counter. And there actually is a whole article in our docs on how to create a distributed counter for cases where you might be sort of doing these kind of very rapid writes. So uh, kind of use whatever approach might work best for you. Good call out on the distributed counter that we have in our docs. That's what I was going to say. Oh, sorry. Nice. I didn't no. mean to steal your answer. Ugh. Yeah, I guess I should have had you ask me, huh? Oh, well, hey, speaking of, I have a question for you, Jen. Or All I guess right. Nader Afshari has a question for you, which is, um, in Functions, how can I access Firestore documents outside of the event context? So, like, I know typically you either have to do a lot of, like, you know, a parent, 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 child, child, child to kind of get to some other kind of unrelated document that you might need. Or, like, if you have, like, a a auth or an analytics trigger, how do you even access um, Firestore in the first place? I absolutely love this question and thank you so much for bringing it to us. This is sort of a common use case that when Cloud Functions triggers for Cloud Firestore first came out, I was like, how do I do it? Because it seemed very different from how I'd been doing it with the real-time database before. And uh, the way that you can access different paths is the easiest way to do that is using the Firebase admin SDKs. So these are included automatically when you are using cloud functions for Firebase, and they enable you to access all sorts of server-side Firebase features. Um, then you would just build up the path like you would uh, right on the client side. And what if they want to grab like some snippets of the you know the path for the current doc, but maybe not all of them? Uh, that's a great point. So sometimes you have like a really long path that you're triggering on and something's embedded multiple deep and you have several wild cards and you're like, well, I need to know what the user ID was that triggered it. Um, well, those uh, wild card parameters are accessible from inside Cloud Functions using context.params. So you can access context.params.userID or whatever exists in those wild card brackets to help you build that new path. That was useful. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that now because I have some functions that probably need some cleanup. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and helping me answer these questions, Todd. I oh, sure. appreciate it. Happy to help out. Happy to spread the Firebase knowledge out to the world. And we absolutely depend on all of you to keep sending us your questions. Thank you so much to everyone who sent a question so far. And please keep them coming our way with the hashtag AskFirebase on social media. And who knows, maybe you'll see your question answered here on a future episode. Right here. That'd be so exciting. What if I was a big fan of the Firebase YouTube channel and somehow I wanted to support it? Is there anything I could do? Why, yes, that is a great question. Oh, thanks. If you enjoy what you see here, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel because we have all sorts of other great content, including some series from you, right? Uh, I think so. But there's also some useful stuff in there as well. And like, should we ask them to press the like button? Oh, yeah, maybe. Still... Press you know? the thumbs up. We want a thumbs up. Nice. And. Don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. Don't forget to floss at least once a day. Don't forget to wash behind your ears. Don't forget to unit test. Oh yeah, wow, that is an important one. Don't forget that you can wear your socks twice if you turn them inside out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to do something a little nice and special for, for somebody in your life. Don't forget, smiles make the best rainbows. Wait, no they don't.
Unless they're frown. Frowns make the best rainbows because they're the right shape. Yep. That was you terrible advice, Kevin. Me. Kevin! <laughs> Come on, man. What happens? Let's just do a whole show. It's just called is, Don't Forget. What is Google autocomplete don't forget to? Ooh, that's a good Hold one. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna this Google autocomplete this. Don't forget. Don't forget to feed your Neopets. Hmm. What happens if you don't? Do they die? Sparky! No! Ah! <laughs> Okay. All right, that was some good banter. That was some good banter. There was some, uh, yeah. something in there. Kevin's like, please move on. I am so tired of listening to your banter. I need to get out of here.